Hey guys, welcome back to another video from our Take Hinter tutorial series. In this video, I'll be explaining how to create and manage file dialogues in Take Hinter. So, what are file dialogues? Well, they're a special GUI element that allow the user to browse through the file system and select a file path. The user can either open up a file at this file path or save a file at this file path. Uh, again, we'll be doing this with a variety of different file dialogues. There's more than just one. All right. So let's get right into it. To save time, I wrote some of the code beforehand. As you can see, there's a button over here and a label. The button is going to be the trigger for our file dialog. So basically, we click on the button and the file dialog triggers. We can see here that we've passed the self.file function into the command parameter. So basically, we'll be working within the file function. Anything we create within the file function will now show up when we click the button. So let's begin. We'll first import the file dialog module. So I'm taking to import file dialog. Okay. Uh, next, in the file function, we'll create the path variable. This is where we'll store the file paths of the files that we select. All right. Next, file dialog dot. And this is where we'll begin accessing its many functions. The first one we'll take a look at is ask open file name. All right. Uh, the first parameter for all functions is the same called initial dir. This is the initial directory into which the file dialog will be opening up. All right. Uh, this leaving a dot here basically opens it up in the same directory as the script that called it. So uh, you can see right here that this is called file dialogs tutorial. All right. So when I open up this file dialog, you'll see that. Uh, the folder that it opens up in has the file dialogs tutorial file. All right. Next, we'll give it a, a title like um, open file. All right. That's fairly simple. Now, there are more parameters, but for now, let's just run this and see how it works. And we'll also include a print statement here so that it'll print out the file, the file path that we select. All right. Again, we'll click this button to trigger the file dialog and triggers. Let's just select data over here, this data.txt file. And there we go. There's our file path printed right out there. All right, so what next? Let's take a look at file types, all right? The file types parameter. I'll just create this separately over here, all right? Because it can get a little messy when it's in the function, all right? All right, what is this really? I just want to show you this real quick. When you open up a file dialog, a typical file dialog, we see these options here, don't we? To basically filter out files. Let's take a look at another parameter called file types. File types is a parameter used to basically filter out a bunch of files by their extension. It's used in, in basically narrowing down your search and making it easier for you to navigate through a bunch of files. So let's get right into it. I want to create this separately here first because it makes things easier on us. You'll understand why in a minute. So Python files. What does this mean? I'll explain all that very soon. Now, steric.py. This is the extension. Basically, this is our tuple. And the first one is meant to be the label. And the second is meant to be the extension. Just remember this format, uh, label and extension. Uh, what this steric really means here is that uh, it refers to the file name. It means that anything can be, can be before this dot and the ending just has to have dot py. This is basically a regex kind of format, actually. You can take, take a look at that if you want later. Um, let's create a second one. And unlike this, which is only for Python files, let's call this all files. And we'll remove py over here and type steric. So similar to this steric, allowing anything to be before the dot, any character being before the dot, any number of characters, actually. The steric means any number of characters and uh, any type of character. So similarly, this after the dot means any type of extension. So that's why it refers to all files. Again, if you didn't understand that, you can take a look at regex, but you don't really need to know that. You just need to re remember this general format, all right? Let's run this. 
Oh wait, hold on. I forgot to actually assign this. So to the file types parameter, we'll assign types. You know, this that we created right here. Let's run this. And click. All right, there's our filter. Uh, let's say we want to look for a text file. Now, as you can see, there, there was a text file here earlier, but we cannot see it because it's being filtered out. So let's move to all files instead. And there we go, we can see it. Now, how about we go ahead and add one for text files? How do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. We'll just call this text. And what's the extension for text files? .txt. So we'll do that and let's run it. And there we go. We have our text files extension. And as you can see that there are only two text files. Again, a pretty handy feature, a pretty handy way of filtering out files in, in order to narrow down your search. All right. There's one more thing I, I want to take a look at. Again, something that's pretty common uh, amongst these functions. Uh, I want to show you how to select multiple files. So there's one really easy way of doing this. Actually, both ways are pretty easy. You can just add a S over here. This is another function. Actually, it basically allows you to open up several files. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, uh, let's filter this down. I want to select both of these. Okay, all right. And there we go. Both have been printed out in the tuple, separated by a comma. There's also one other way of doing this. We can use the multiple parameter and pass in true. Let's run this. And uh, again, we can select as many files as we want. All right. The third function I want to discuss is the ask open file function. I'm just going to remove names from here and we have our ask open file function. So what makes this one special? Well, you see, unlike the others, this returns a file object, not a file path. This allows us to use a special file related commands such as read. Read reads the contents of the file and then returns them to us. All right. So let's just remove this last parameter here. And this is because ask open file does not support multi selection. All right. And let's just use the read function over here, all right? Because there's no real point to printing out the object, all right? We want to print out something that makes sense to us. So we're going to print out the contents of the file, all right? Let's run this. Here's our file dialog. Let me filter out for text files. And there's data. This is a text file that I created uh, with some sample data in it. So if we open this, this should return the data and print it out on screen, the data written inside it. And there we go. This is the line that I wrote inside that file. Well, that's a pretty handy feature. So there's one more thing I want to take a look at before we move on to saving. It's the ask directory function. Uh, up till now, we've just been showing you how to open up files, right? This is a way of selecting a folder itself and returning its file path. Now, let's just remove this here, all right, because uh, folders don't have file paths, all right? Uh, and let's run this. Directory means folder, by the way, all right, just so you don't get confused. Okay, uh, the reason nothing's showing up over here is because I haven't created a folder in here. So let me just make one quickly sample folder okay let's select this now and there we go the file path to this folder or the file path of the directory has been returned the last function we have here is the ask save as file function all right let's just change a few things to save file and let's bring back file types because again that's important when saving and here we go so let's run this code here open the file dialog go to sample folder and save sample.py all right and this returns this strange object here we can note that there are a few attributes in here name mode and encoding 
the name attribute is the most relevant. So let's go here and type path.name. This returns just the name attribute. Let's run this code again, repeat our steps, overwrite the sample.py file. And here we can see that our file path has been returned, the file path of the file we just created. All right. Now we're actually done here. Just one thing I want to mention. Uh, let's say you wanted to save some data as well. The file dialog is not used to save data, right? It just creates the file basically at a specific location. But the file path that you just obtained over here is what you can use to save the data. So basically you break it up into two steps. You first use the file dialog to pick a location and save the file, meaning you create the file, an empty file. And then you can use the returned file path to uh, save the data, to write the data to that file. And if you want to know how to do that in, in Python, I'll include a link in the description for file handling. And that's the end of this video. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe. We still have a long way to go, a lot more things to cover. Up till now, we've just been discussing single widgets, uh, one widget at a time. And soon we'll be discussing how to use multiple widgets all together. All right. Well, then see you in the next video.